What's up, college football fans? Sonoy Valente here with the Mean Green Show, and I'm joined here with Sippy from Sippy Sports Show. Yo, yo, and guys, yo. you already know the drill. If you're a fan of college football, college football recruiting, G5 football, and of course the transfer portal, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and let us know what you think, Southern Miss fans, about this video and what you think is going to happen. All right. Well, Sippy, first and foremost, man, how you doing? You you and the family staying warm with this weather out there? Oh, man, we're good. Um, I'm on my second day of a freezing day, not a snow day down here in Louisiana. We got freezing days where the it'll rain a little bit, sleet a little bit, yeah. then it'll freeze over. And so I'm on my I'm on my freezing day, you know? Yeah. Are you uh, getting some of that liquid warmth, you know, in your system, keeping you nice and warm or? <laughs> Way yes. ahead of you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, what what do you got in the cup today? Uh just some just some Jim Bean and some Coke, man. Okay, keeping it okay. keeping it light. Oh yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> keeping it PG. That's good. That's, that, that's good. my light drink right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's a light drink. Yes, sir. Well, hey, you know, I you know, I appreciate you coming on and you know, just really wanted to kind of take, you know, y- y- your temperature in a sense of just kind of where you think uh Southern Miss is that coming off of the season they had and, you know, obviously the hiring Will Hall and getting into the recruiting class and, of course, the quarterback battle and, and whatnot. So just kind of wanted to dive into things with you and, you know, just kind of hear your take on, on the stuff. So, uh, you know, coming off of a three and seven season last year and obviously it was, you know, COVID affected all of us as far as the number of games we can play. And with your three wins, one of them being against my squad, UNT. Uh, thanks for thanks for that. Um, you got, but and then another one, obviously, being against a, a pretty uh, highly regarded team in, in the conference in FAU. Um, you, you know, I mean, did that win kind of boost morale kind of going into, going into the offseason of just like, wow, we, we beat a powerhouse, you know, on, on a down year for us? Um, well, to, to talk about the FAU game, uh, you got to go back uh, the week before. Um, at that time, two and seven, uh, people – uh, were we even going to play um, FAU? We didn't know. Games were getting canceled left and right. Um, but you got to go back to the week before, and that week is where we hired Will Hall. Mm-hmm. Um, in that hiring, uh, Will Hall comes in, does a presser, um, does a little nice interview. He talks up the fans, gets everybody on board. And when, when he leaves the interview, you get a sense of, hey, man, uh, this last game against FAU, it's not it's not just an, another lost game for these players. It's it's something that we're going to look at as a as a job interview, um, as a tryout for next season. And I feel like that's how they they went into it with the motivation of the press conference Will Hall had. The it's time to win now. We don't need to you know promise on this that and the other in recruiting on waiting and you know looking at your risk. Oh, you got to give a coach three years. It was kind of mm-hmm. like hey, we got to come in uh, win next year. And, and I feel like the FAU game was a, like I said, a job interview. Um, and, and those guys came out and A plus it. And my goodness, three and seven to end the season was terrible. Yeah. But if you go back and see how they ended that last game <clears throat> as a Southern Miss fan, you can't help but be a little prideful that they didn't go out. You know, they went out with a bang mm-hmm. for the new coach and for the tryout. So we're very hopeful for next season. Just off of the way Trey Lowe performed um, in that last game against FAU heading into the offseason. Interesting, man. Interesting. So, yeah. I and mean, how are you guys feeling about the hire of Will Hall? I know, like, he did amazing things, you know, offensively with uh, at Tulane, and you know, uh, you know, happened to bring a few guys with him when he came over that we'll get into in a little bit. But yeah. So, what's the, um, you know, what's the climate like for for that hire, you know, in Hattiesburg? Um, well, um, it's always good to get a local guy, and I say local. Will Hall's from Amory, Mississippi, which is up north. Um, Did he play QB? Some, but correct. He was he was the one of a short. He was a shorter quarterback. Yeah, what was he like five nine? Yeah, five eight, five nine. A shorter guy. Uh, he played quarterback at Amory High School under his dad, uh, Bobby Hall, which is a legend around Mississippi in the high school ranks. Um, so he played under his dad, Bobby Hall, uh, played quarterback, uh, like I said, a shorter quarterback, mm-hmm. didn't get a lot of looks, a lot of offers. He ends up going a Juco route. Then he goes to, um, uh, uh, I think it was, uh, West Alabama or North Alabama and does really well there. Uh, but then ends up coaching. Um, he ends up coaching at, uh, West Georgia and at West Alabama as well. And ends up winning three Gulf South, uh, conference championships. Uh, at, when we hired him, obviously coming in. As a head football coach, he's 56 and 20. Um, although we were every when you look at a news article, oh, Southern Miss is hiring Tulane's offensive coordinator. 
Uh, but but you got to look back at him, man. This is a Mississippi kid growing up that, you know, has always inspired to coach in the state of Mississippi at the D1 level. So it was kind of like a home run hitter. We're getting a local guy. He's not necessarily a Southern Miss guy, graduate or nothing like that. Um, but his dad being a, a high school coaching legend, um, him having the football career he had, kind of like the, the little man always uh, fighting the big guy. Mm-hmm. Never had that shot. And when he had a shot, he produced well. Um, he, he's been a winner everywhere he's went. And now I'm telling you, when we got him, it was a lot of ups and downs. People really didn't know how to feel because he's never really coached head, head coach at the D1 level. But with the success he had so fast at Tulane, I mean, my goodness, that, that was a fly high in offense. They were throwing all over the place. They put up 60 points on Southern Miss in Hattiesburg last mm-hmm. season under Will Hall. So, I mean, I'll be honest with you. When they hired him initially, I was upset about it. I mm-hmm. wanted a big splash hire. I wanted a big name coach coming in. I mean, my goodness, you got Lane Lane Kiffin and yeah. uh, Mississippi State Mike Leach, you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, and Deion Sanders at Jackson State. So I mean, the whole state of Mississippi's ate up with big name coaches, mm-hmm. and then they brought in uh, Will Hall. But I mean, when you look at them on paper, you're like, hey, man, we got the youngest of the bunch. It seems the most inspiring upcomer, a home run kid, uh, a hometown kid, kinda. So, so we're excited through it all, the way he came in, the way he talked it up, and the way he's happy for this team, the way that – I mean, he brought in the freaking strength and conditioning coach from Old Miss for us. Uh, he brings in uh, hires from – he's bringing in hires from, uh, from Tulane with him. Uh, and then those hires are going to, to Arkansas before they even coach at Southern Miss. I don't know if you heard about that one. I did not. That is uh, nice to me too. That is interesting though. Cody Kennedy, the O-line coach he brought from Tulane, uh, he ends up getting a coaching job at Arkansas. So now he's all out the way. Uh, uh, he's the Arkansas tight end coach, I believe. So wait a minute. He he got hired. He came from, t- from Tulane to Southern Miss. And before the season even started, he got another job at Arkansas? Correct. Yes, sir. What in the world? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we already have a new offensive line coach. But we do still have um, – Jordy Joseph, uh, which was actually a quarterback at Tulane and ended up being a, a, a position coach over there. So he's he's still – he brought him as well over from Tulane. So he's still mm-hmm. there on staff. Yeah. So, you know. And then we could get into recruits on who we brought from Tulane as well. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, obviously, just kind of get it out of the way. There is a big quarterback uh, – talk that we'll we'll have uh, that you guys have going on but before we get into you know too much quarterback specifically uh just you know this 21 signing class as a whole you know what's the feel for them you know are you guys you know how do you guys feel about this class coming in well the first thing i'd say don't look it up don't, yeah. don't look it up and look at our ranking uh so sure. the reason being the reason we have such a low here's my theory okay the reason we have such a low ranking conference and nationally mm-hmm. uh, um, we have FCS schools above us ranked nationally, just saying. But, yeah. but uh, if you look at it, we only have, what, nine, eight or nine? Uh, yeah, you got teams. nine signings yeah. and, cool. yeah, five compared transfers to, coming. So 14 in the boat right now. Correct. Compared to some teams that are up in the high 20s. you know. Right. So, so, I mean, does that factor in? I think yes. I think it's a lack of a uh, number of scholarships that we had. Um, but if you look at the guys that we did have, if you mm-hmm. look at our recruit class, I mean, my God. Uh, we made up for it in the transfer portal. Yes. Um, and then we we had guys I, – I, I listed, you know, three guys right here that flipped from other mm-hmm. schools when mm-hmm. we all came. They flipped their commitment from a high school to Southern Miss. Right. So we, well, not only did he just bring in a, a bunch of high school kids when he came, um, I say a bunch, uh, nine high school yeah. guys. Uh, not only did he do that, but – the guys that he ended up getting actually were going to go to another school. They weren't just guys that didn't have any offers. Right. The guys he's bringing in are guys that were all already going to go to another school that flipped and, you know, are now coming to Southern Miss. So, right. Right. Um, I think it factors into the rate rankings, you know, um, yeah. the, the lack of the lack of bodies, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, it definitely does. A lot of times. Yeah. It's like if you go look at the conference rating or rankings, it's usually the, whoever has the most like the quantity, if you will, yeah, it's a high, agree. But like as far as quality, it, it, you know, I mean, it plays a factor, but yeah, you're right. So I, um, I, I always like to look at the average, you know, and you guys average rating from last year is up um, a little bit. So that's good. Uh, you know, and whatnot. Are you a fan of how uh, aggressive you guys have been in the portal this year thus far, as opposed to last year, you know, last year you guys got, you know, you brought in, I think three this year, you're already up to five and who knows if it's over or not. Right. 
you know, with us conference USA schools, a lot of times our recruiting goes into uh, the summers, uh, you know, so, um, but are you a fan of that? Um, well, this season for sure, all day. Yeah. Any, any yeah. other season, we would talk about this, and I would say, no, 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 no. Let's go get high school talent. You get mm -hmm. two more years to uh, develop them. Why are you going and getting um, – you know, even and, – and I was a JUCO guy, so hear me out. Yeah. Even going to junior colleges and going and getting transfers, you're limited on number of years that you're going to have these guys. Mm -hmm. all, all day, I'll, I'll tell any coach out there, go and get some high school guys and take mm -hmm. chances because you can develop them. You can develop a bad habit before they, you know, learn to – what I'm saying is yeah. you can get guys in with, um, you know, that don't know bad habits and it, right. it, it at all work at, at all best, you know, you're the reason they're learning bad habits instead yeah. of they're coming somewhere with bad habits already. Sure. So, so I'm all for um, this season in particular, bringing them in because not only did we have a, a late jump to the recruiting class, um, but we brought in Montre Edwards from Missouri, the D tackle, Jay mm -hmm. Stanley, the safety from Ole Miss, Lacavius. Uh, Daniel, the cornerback from Ole Miss, uh, Everett Cunningham, defensive end from Memphis, uh, T. Webb, the quarterback from Louisville. So, I mean, we were bringing we, – it's not like we were getting guys from, um, you know, transfers from uh, Jackson State or yeah. Chattanooga. You know, we sure. were getting guys from, you know, Power 5 schools. Absolutely. And, yeah. and, of course, you know, I'm be happy about that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I – you know, I must say I have a little bit of a different view – um, you know, as far as transfer goes, I mean, I'm definitely in the mindset of you need to have a good, healthy, um, I guess, foundation of you, uh, if you will, in your class of, of high school kids. But beyond that, man, I'm kind of a fan of just plunging the portal for, for guys that have kind of already proven themselves. I mean, we've seen it work with SMU and Shane Bouchel and, uh, you know, FAU. I mean, that's just one name, obviously, but like the, the list is pretty long. So I personally, I like what they're doing and, you know, I'm not a Southern Miss fan, but I, I admire them, the aggressiveness in the portal and, you know, kind of going out there and, and, uh, you know, getting their guys that they want. And, uh, you know, so, okay. So the big question, man, <laughs> the main reason why I wanted to talk to you, let's talk about Southern Miss's quarterback room. Okay. So Ooh. take the 21 class out of it for a second. If let's say, no, say you guys, I know you guys got two. Um, but let's say you guys did not get a quarterback. Would Trey Lowe be the presumptive starter for the 22 season? All day, all Maybe. day. Uh, Tate Watley's out. Um, he's not coming back to school. Okay. So we're, we're uh, I, I, if you didn't count the new guys, it would be Tate, uh, Trey Lowe. I'm sorry. It would be Trey Lowe and Jack Walker. And okay. Jack Walker was a junior college guy that came in two years okay. ago. Okay. Yeah. Not to take anything away from the other guys. Um, beside Trey, but it, it seems like Trey is pretty much, uh, again, disregarding the signees, um, the guy that they would go with. And, you know, he was a transfer too out of West Virginia. Um, so they kind of gone back to back years with transfer QBs, obviously under different coaches. So, you know, you can take that as you will. Um, but bringing the 21 guys back into the conversation. So when you guys got Ty Keys, you know, flipped him when Will Hall flipped him over from, uh, to Lane to Southern Miss, dude. Good God in heaven, man! I don't know off the top of my head, but I mean, as as far as uh, this has gone back, this twenty four seven. I'm trying to pull it up right now. I mean, man, you think he's the highest rated, you know, quarterback to ever sign with you guys? I mean, since they started doing the ratings, um, we'll see. Since I, I have to say no, uh, okay. it's crazy to say that because Ty Keys, my God, he he ends up going to four state championships. Yeah. He three of them. The only reason he didn't win the fourth one is because he was out with an injury in the right. state championship game. So this guy was going to win four. He, as far as rate rankings and ratings, this guy should have been way above what he was, but he was at a two, 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 a high school, mm -hmm. very small in Mississippi. So yes, he was a huge fish, not even a big fish, huge yeah. fish, in a small pond. Um, but, but our biggest quarterback that we ever got was Anthony Alf Alfred, uh, mm -hmm. which ended up playing uh, MLB, and he's uh, ended up playing baseball and all that. So yeah, uh, he's actually playing ball now. But no, uh, Takis is definitely underrated to me. Uh, yeah. just being at a smaller high school, you know yeah. that that yeah. it holds him back, man. It holds him well, back. I don't know if you can really say he's underrated when he has offers from Auburn, Kansas, <laughs> <laughs> Mississippi State, Nebraska, Ole Miss, Oregon, Arkansas. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on for him. So, yeah, I mean, I get I get what you're saying, being somewhat underrated as a 2A guy, but that does not sound like – like that sounds like a guy that I want. You know, I want, I want to – 
let's see. I, I, I counter it by by if you look at his stars. Mm -hmm. he, yes, he had, and that that proves my point with the offers. Yeah, I had a, he should have been four stars all day. Yeah, sure. And and, and he's listed. If we look at it, the, there's no reason he shouldn't have been four four and above, man. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and that's why. And if he would have been a four, yeah, he would have been our biggest quarterback we ever. Yeah, had. So, sure, sure. Um, okay, and then we also want to talk about uh, the Louisville kid coming in, T. Webb. Okay, oh, and yeah. with COVID and everything, you know, I'm pretty sure he his eligibility is immediate this year. Mm -hmm. I I think so. Okay, let me ask you, man. You got T. Webb, you got Trey Lowe, who's transferred in, and Trey Lowe showed that he could play some. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he definitely, and that was you know, his, in year one, and obviously, you got your your jewel recruit and Ty Keese who. You know what I mean? Like how 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 do you think they're going to juggle that? You know what do you what do you? And I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, but you know what do you think is going to happen next year? If you had to guess, and beyond, I mean, like whoever's going to be third, or is this um is this Trey Lowe's last year of eligibility? Oh no, he came over last year and he was a sophomore. So he has, and and last year a lot of people were referring to it as year zero. So that right. last year not counting. So you're saying he has. Next year and two more years. Oh yeah, and is that the same story for um, for T Webb? T Webb's coming over as a transfer freshman. So he he'll have freshman next. So he'll have the twenty one season as a freshman. Correct. And then you have Ty Keese as a true freshman. Oh yeah, that's a great problem to have, yeah. but it is yeah. somewhat of a of a problem nonetheless. So. So tell me, man. I mean, how are they how are they going to juggle that? You, we all know. I mean, it's nothing. It's not a knock on anybody. That's just science. Someone's going to transfer eventually. Like, there's just no way around it. And that's just where we're at in college football. And you know, and we'll see. You know how that goes. But how do you? How do you? How, I guess. I mean, so Ty Keys, he's not even going to be there for spring, right? No, Ty Keys he's, won't be he's there early. So he'll get there in the summer. In summer, yes. But T Webb will be there in the spring, right? Correct. He's already there. So T. E. Webb and Trey Lowe, I guess, will battle it out. Mm -hmm. And man, what? Let me let me let me just uh, like tell me what what do you think is going to? How is this going to okay. shake okay. out for you guys <laughs> with three three marquee quarterbacks? All right. Well, you got to go back to the, you got to go back to who T. Webb is. Okay, T. Webb. Um, and, and some say, oh, that's why he's transferring. That's why he don't like blah blah blah. Whatever. Sure. Seventh grade, Louis Louisville offered him in the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. um, now that's that stuck with him in his mind throughout his whole life, going through his career. You know, oh Louisville, Louisville offered me in seventh grade. Louisville offered me in seventh grade. He goes to high school. He's behind Trevor Lawrence in high school. He went goes to the same high school as Trevor Lawrence, and you know history knows what Trevor Lawrence is doing. Oh, uh, sure. But but being behind Trevor Lawrence, obviously you learn more there. He goes and gets a whole uh, T Web gets a whole bunch of offers, man, and ends up going back to where he knows best who offered me first. So he goes to Louisville. And um, so he, last year he rode the bench and you understand the coach that offered this kid in the seventh grade at Louisville. Every, like he, I don't have to tell you that the dude coach ain't there no more. They don't yeah. change yeah. coach. So everything that was promised to him then has been thrown out the door. you still got a scholarship here. Come home, blah, blah, blah. So with all this being said, he transfers to Southern Miss after sitting on the bench last year, taking a red shirt. Um, him coming in, Will Hall said very fast. He was like, man, any of these transfers that we do get, mm -hmm. they have to come in and be an on-field uh, you know, difference maker. They have to come in and make plays now. Mm -hmm. So they do that. If that's what he's going to go off of, sounds like T. Webb's going to be our guy. Now, I'm telling you right now, if I'm coach going into the spring, going into the summer, going into all this, I'm putting Ty, um, Tra uh, Trey Lowe out there as my starter. Um, he he performed extremely well in that FAU game mm -hmm. where he yes, had he a whole week of practice, whole week of reps with the ones. He just looked really good, and, and he he's meshed and got has chemistry with this team already. I just don't think that you can you can throw a transfer straight out there, mm -hmm. um, you know, especially when you got a guy like Trey Lowe that did mm -hmm. really well. So if if I was to rank some quarterbacks right now, uh, going in, and I'll, I'll say this right now, not going into fall. But mm -hmm. going into spring and summer, uh, I, I'm putting Trey Lowe as my starter, right. T. Webb as my backup, and then I'm red shirting Ty Keys. I'm you playing them. Are you, you going to play him those four games though? If you were the coach, I don't think I do. Really, I, you, you don't even put him in for four and you let him keep his red shirt? Let me let me hear with, why. 
it, and it's just the, the the thing that's going through my head right now is the fact that we have two other guys in front. Yes. Of yeah. So I mean, even uh, I mean, I, you can only come up with so many packages for two quarterbacks. Sure. Are we really? It, it would have to be an injury situation. I yeah. feel to bring in Tykes. Yeah. And now some people out there will argue that hey man, Tykes is the best quarterback that we have all out of Might all be. of them. Might and, be. If he is, he is. But you got to yeah. understand, Tykes comes in in the summer, mm-hmm. whereas T Webb and Trey Low are both going to get. I mean, at least two, three more months than this guy will. Absolutely. Um, with the new playbook. So, yeah. I'd love to see a freshman come in and take yeah. over. Would that be awesome? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be exciting. I don't want to see it as a North Texas fan, but that would be exciting. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, man. That's cool. Well, hey, you know, I, th- I think that pretty much wraps it up. You know, Sippy, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, you know, I really appreciate your time. Like always, guys, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and be sure to check out Sippy Sports Show on uh, Twitter and YouTube. He does a great job of covering Southern Miss uh, football and really everything Southern Miss, you know. So be sure to uh, give him a follow. Once again, Sippy, thank you so much. Right to the top. Yes, sir.